Ochi State is one of the 36 states that made up the Nigerian Federation. In terms of population, the current projected estimates in 2022 reveal that Bochi State is inhabited by 8,308,800 people. With an area of 65,893 square kilometers, Bochi State is indeed endowed with vast natural resources and is also renowned globally as an enviable tourist destination. No wonder it is referred to as the Pearl of Tourism. But despite its huge natural and human resources, Bochi State is yet to attain its full potentials. Although Bochi State have witnessed a wide array of military and civilian administrations in its 43-year history, none of these past administrations was able to successfully reposition the state to a path of self-actualization. In spite of this gloomy picture, when Governor Bala Muhammad took over the mantle of leadership in Bochi State in 2019, he was not deterred. As a matter of fact, Governor Bala Muhammad swiftly swung into action to implement his blueprint for the Bochi Restoration and Transformation Mission. Well, my motivation for buying for the seat of the governor in 2019 was just to serve my people. I've been served at the national level and garnered a lot of experience and exposure and having benefited so much from the, the state, the communities and so on and so forth. I felt I had what it takes to come and uh, give my own contribution to the development and growth of the state and uh, having also experienced similar responsibilities at the national level, especially at the FCT. I believe the subnational administration needs somebody with experience, who can manage men and uh, resources. Even before uh, he was sworn in, uh, he came in with a wealth of experience that he has acquired as a civil servant, as a senator, and as a minister of the Federal Capital Territory, which is actually bigger than some states. He supervises the FCT, which has a budget that is bigger than the states of the Northeast combined together. So he came as a seasoned politician and a seasoned technocrat and public servant. In spite of the huge problems which he inherited, Governor Bala Muhammad was not overwhelmed. On the contrary, he swiftly swung into action in order to restore the battered image and lost glory of Bochi State. Among his first priorities were the initiation of new socio-economic infrastructure and the rehabilitation of decayed ones in critical sectors such as healthcare, water supply, roads and revitalization of education. Today, Governor Bala Abdul Qadir Muhammad is barely over three years in office. During this period, the man has taken Bochi State by storm. Over the past three years or so, he has proven that he is not an accidental governor. The pace at which his administration has been unfolding its manifesto has been very dizzying and breathtaking. Not a single day passes without the governor making media headlines through his innovative policies, programs and actions. Since May 2019, he has been springing beautiful surprises on the people. Indeed, the game changer has come and Bochi State and its people have been widely celebrating him with a lot of euphoria and fanfare. In this documentary program, we will focus on the achievements recorded in the actualization of the less for more policy drive of Governor Bala Abdul Qadir Muhammad through the establishment of the Bochi State Project's Monitoring and Evaluation Committee, BSPMEC. During his campaign, Governor Bala Muhammad observed the monumental decay and lack of basic infrastructure facilities all over the state. The situation was indeed pathetic. Consequently, in April 2020, Governor Bala Muhammad constituted the Bochi State Project's Monitoring and Evaluation Committee, consisting of a chairman with nine members and the secretary. The terms of reference of the committee are to supervise, monitor, 
evaluate and certify the construction of 2,500 mass housing projects to ensure compliance with building and construction standards, to establish a durable framework for direct labor in the procurement and implementation of government contracts and projects, to establish basic engineering measurement and evaluation for all direct labor projects to ensure value for money, to evaluate and monitor all projects undergoing upgrade in MDAs and to submit its periodic report to His Excellency through the Secretary to the State Government. In order to ensure that the committee delivers its mandate, Governor Bala Muhammad appointed a seasoned technocrat in the person of architect Baba Muhammad to be the chairman of the committee. In a nutshell, this office is to be the eyes of the governor, the executive governor on all projects ongoing in the state. In terms of ensuring quality delivery, uh, projects are supposed to be completed within the terms agreed. And being not party to contracts awarded. We monitor and sometimes supervise the project directly, but we give uh, our observations of corrections to be made to the supervising ministry to now inform the other party, the contractors. All is towards achieving quality delivery. With the governor having this policy of less for more, it is to say that the optimal cost is expended to realize the full project targeted. M&A monitoring and evaluation is key to the success of any governance because you must be able to know what is going on. Supervision is a key, what is going on in the field. And uh, it is only through that, that right from conceptualization, you will be able to know how, what is the cost. And so uh, pricing uh, is, is a key to actualization of projects and programs because you can go on over invoice and if you don't know, you'll be ignorant. And you will know what is going on whether the contractors are working or they are not working. Hitherto, governors are just sitting as armchair administrators and then they don't know what's going on. They are, they are gullible because here you will be surrounded by the bureaucracy and the trappings of power and then you don't know what's going on. But the m and &E people are made up of technocrats, seasoned engineers who can measure. Everything in project management is measurement and evaluation. So. And that's why we have the M and E, and they are doing their best. They can intervene in every project. They can interfere. They can even in the procurement. I told them there there is no limit to which they will not go. They are my eyes everywhere. Uh, they are the eyes of the people of Bauchi, not mine, because whatever I'm, I was doing, I will be doing it on behalf of the people. So M and E is the key because I did it in FCT. And I can see that I have the engineering department, FCD, doing things, but I have my M and E. Uh, is telling me what is going on. In, in case of FCT, I even have cells in each uh, unit or each village, what is going on. So M&A is a key to knowing what is going on and then implementation of projects and programs generally. So one may wonder what are these projects being executed by Governor Bala Muhammad under the supervision of the Bocha State Projects Monitoring and Evaluation Committee over the past three years or so this is the all-encompassing question this television documentary program is set out to answer. The performance of the Bala Muhammad government in the area of road construction has already been described as not just remarkable but unprecedented in the history of Bochi State, especially the quality of these projects. Perhaps Governor Muhammad's greatest achievement in office so far is the construction of some of the most forgotten roads in Bochi State. In the first phase of his intercity roads program, 
He has awarded contracts for the construction of Sa'i Akuyam Road, which links Darazo and Dambam local government areas, and the 58 km Yalwanduguri Burga Road, linking Birim, Kundak, Kumbala, Yalwanduguri, Badaranduse, and Burga, which are respective communities of Al Kaleri and Tafao Baliwa local governments. These are some of the road projects that had defied every previous administration in Bonchi State since the state was created more than 40 years ago. However, in just one single move, Governor Muhammad has awarded the contracts to the construction of the roads. Today, work is progressing simultaneously on these major roads, much to the satisfaction of the benefiting communities. For the roads, we look at the local government that were, were locked down, there was no access. We opened up access to rural areas and built so many roads and continue with the urban renewal because that's where majority of Nigerians live. In addition to opening up rural communities across the state with a network of roads, Governor Bala Muhammad has also been upgrading and expanding road networks in the state's major towns and cities. In Bochi, the state capital, two brand new road bypasses have been constructed in an effort to ease traffic in the city centre. These are the Ibrahim Bag Oterwan bypass linking Gombe Road with Maiduguri Road and the Sabang Aura Miri bypass linking Das Road with Joss Road. In addition to the two bypass roads in Bocha City, the ever-busy two-kilometer Mudalawal Market transversing through Bakyunkura Malam Goja Road, also in the state capital, has been totally rehabilitated, as well as the three-kilometer Gwangwangwang Bakaro to Kofar Dumi Roads. Azari, the second largest town in the state, is also getting the administration's urban renewal program. Already, some urban roads have been completed in the town, much to the satisfaction of residents. As a matter of fact, in Bochi State today, even federal roads that have developed problems are getting the attention of the state government. For instance, the Bochikano Highway has been dualized starting from Guo Science Academy down to the Abu Bakr Tafal Baliwa Airport. It is a known fact that the gigantic strides of Governor Bala Muhammad in the area of road construction are too numerous to mention in a time-bound documentary program. This is because more contracts are being awarded frequently to meet the yearning and aspirations of the masses. Under the supervision of the Bochi State Projects Monitoring and Evaluation Committee, hundreds of millions of naira that would have been paid to consultants as consultancy and supervision has been saved. There is the Bochi State Projects Monitoring and Evaluation Committee, which I am a member by virtue of my office. Uh, together with this committee, we have so far ensured that we save cost for the government and we ensure that contractors execute projects with due diligence and according to specifications. By that, today we can beat our chest and say that our projects, they can stand the test of time anywhere, any place. As uh, you can see, there are many spread across the state uh, in the area of road construction. We are currently undergoing the construction of a 521 kilometer road network across Bochi State from the southern to the central and to the northern zone. About 37 different road projects. Uh, including those we inherited from the last administration. And uh, today, a substantial number of these projects have been completed, and the good people of Bochi State are enjoying uh, the benefits of these projects. Another major achievement of Governor Bala Muhammad is in the area of water supply. 
At the inception of the administration, the water supply situation in the state was terribly inadequate. Because of the acute shortage of potable water, some communities, especially in the rural areas, had to rely on alternative sources of water for their day-to-day -day needs. Apparently, this was dangerous to human health. Even in Bochi, the state capital, the situation was no less different. The Gubi Dam Water Works, which supplies water to the state capital, had plenty of problems to contend with. Among its major problems were overstretched facilities, inadequate funding and erratic power supply. As a result, the Gubi Dam treatment plant was providing far less water than was required in the state capital and environs. This was against the background of an expanding city and a fast-growing population. On assumption of office, therefore, Governor Bala Muhammad paid immediate attention to the problem of water supply in the state. To address the problem of water shortage in the state capital, contract was awarded for the rehabilitation and expansion of the Gubi Dam Water Works at the cost of 71.5 million US dollars. The scope of work of this huge water project includes the replacement of 50 kilometers of Bocha City's old pipe network, the laying of 100 additional kilometers of new ones in order to expand water supply to new areas within the metropolis and its environs, as well as the rehabilitation of existing water reservoirs and the construction of new ones in strategic locations. The project was implemented through a collaborative effort between the World Bank and the state government. The World Bank provided the sum of 65 million US dollars, while the Bochi state government provided a counterpart fund of 6.5 million US dollars. Today, the dam is able to supply 75 million liters of treated water to Bochi city on a daily basis. The issue of water supply in Bochi Metropolis in particular and other urban areas of Bochi State, which is demanded of the corporation, uh, has been of a great challenge to previous administrations and uh, as well to this administration. But we are lucky with the coming on board of this administration. The World Bank project, which was going at a snail speed, was rejected by His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Bocha State, and it was launched uh, on the 19th of July 2019. That gave the impetus for the project to be to be executed with the required speed. And uh, Alhamdulillah would say that the issue of water supply in Bochi Metropolis is a thing of the past because areas that before now weren't getting water are now getting water. A uh, typical example we can give are uh, Winton Dada, Yelwa, Gualemiji, and even the supply within the metropolis has greatly improved, which means um, the investment done in the area of water supply is quite appreciable and it has also yielded the desired fruit. So Senator Bala Abdelkader Mohammed also realized that the people that live in Bochi are not people from Bochi local government alone. You will find people from all the 20 local governments and other states living here. So investing in Bochi city is, in Bo is, in, is investing in the whole of Bochi State. And that is why we started with the project we inherited, which is the World Bank uh, Water Expansion Project, that uh, actually um, uh, will now provide a water master plan for Bochi State for the many years to come. And that has uh, helped in uh, providing clean water and improving hygiene across Bochi and the suburb. One of Governor Bala Muhammad's campaign promises during the 2019 electionary period was the provision of affordable housing scheme to bridge the wide gap of housing shortages prevalent in the state. 
On assumption to office, therefore, one of the first major actions taken by Governor Bala Muhammad in the housing sector was to roll out his own housing agenda by flagging off the construction of 2,500 new housing units across the six Emirates consuls of Bochi State. These housing projects have no doubt provided job opportunities and have boosted economic activities in Bochi State and will go a long way in meeting the housing insufficiencies, especially among civil servants in the state. Today, work has reached completion stage in most of the construction sites across the state. This is especially true about the housing estate being constructed along Bochi Joss Road, opposite Unity Estate, which will soon be commissioned. I'm glad to state that uh, I'm not surprised when our governor was eventually given an award by His Excellency, the President of this country, General Muhammad Buhari, retired as the best governor in terms of rural development. I'm sure without taking too much of your time, I would like to give you a lowdown of what we have achieved within the few years of his administration or of our administration. Uh, our Abel governor together, he has this attitude of taking commissioners to Abuja to go and pursue projects, funding, interventions and so on in the interest of the state. While he was uh, in Abuja, he called me at a particular time that uh, we better key into the housing program, federal government housing program, which we went and signed an agreement with Family Homes Funds Limited, an associate of our Federal Minister of Finance, and we were able to secure a loan of about 12 billion naira to build 2,500 houses across the state. And uh, it, this project was not only domiciled in Bauchi, it was spread into the six emirates of the state that we have. So you will agree with me, the project has uh, gone to 99%. Our Abel governor, during his administration and his achievements, he has been able to fund the construction of the reformation of the new government house, which we are using the new banquet hall. His present office that he occupies was built erected and built and completed within one year. And then the construction and remodeling of the Bauchi State Lazen Office in Abuja. This was also done by this ministry with the authority of His Excellency. The Bauchi State Government House um, has been in existence for several years. And uh, when the current governor came into power, he decided to refurbish it, restructure and rebuild it. Um, it's an old, old government house that really was not, no longer functional and didn't have any aesthetic value to it. So he decided to actually rebuild, rebuild the entire government house um, by restructuring everything, the governor's office, the residences, the clinic, and the annexes. Quite a major project that we've been handling and is going very well. Uh, if you realize, Bauchi is the gateway to the Northeast and um, the government house needs to look good. If you go to other states, Gombe State, Kano State, Kaduna State, you see very, very good looking government houses. Uh, a government house for a state is the first thing anybody sees and notices. When you come in here and you see a government house that looks good, it gives you an image. Investors will be, will be attracted and want to come in. Take this conference center, for example. It's an ICC, International Conference Center. This building, I can assure you, will compete with any conference center in this country. Why not in Bauchi? You go to Gombe, you see the International Conference Center. Why not Bauchi? And, and don't forget that of late, all was discovered here in Bauchi State. And what stops Bauchi from requesting that the next uh, Nigerian oil and gas uh, program be held here in Bauchi in a conference center like this? And don't forget where the governor is coming from. He governed, he served as F, uh, FCT minister for six years. He's trying to bring that class, that, that, pr that projection, that imagery of being uh, world-class citizens to Bauchi. So all these things uh, in time and history 
you will realize the importance of it. In an effort to enhance service delivery in the civil service by providing conducive working environment, Governor Bala Muhammad awarded contracts for the renovation and upgrading of the Abu Bakr Umar Secretariat as well as all local government secretariats across the 20 local government areas of the state. These projects were also monitored and supervised by the Bochi State Projects Monitoring and Evaluation Committee. This was indeed the first time these facilities were completely overhauled since when they were constructed. As a matter of fact, before the renovation of these facilities, they look more like refugee camps. But Under my supervision, the governor awarded the reconstruction and the renovation of all the 20 local government secretariat in the state. Now, the civil servant, they are always happy in all the 20 local government for decades, no renovation. Some they were there for more than 40 years, there was no renovation in the local government. But now, all the 20 local government were renovated Fantastic. If you go, it has become very conducive offices for the civil servant. And even the state secretariat. Go and see the state secretariat. It has been renovated and uh, reconstructed some of the uh, uh, offices. So uh, we thank God. We are always praying, may God bless Senator Bala Abdul Kadra. May God reward him here and after, because he has done a lot. Even after his death, the people of Bochester will never forget him. If you come to the traditional institution, we have uh, 38 old uh, district heads. All these 38 district heads, we have only remaining three district heads that were not being, you know, constructed their palaces and furnished them. Very soon, we are going to complete them. With the new uh, district head that uh, has been, you know, uh, 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 appointed, we are going to have then a befitting palaces with all furniture in off. If you go to all our uh, uh, district head palaces, when you go, you go to compare the district head palaces, you will think that it's uh, 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 Amir's palaces in some... In some in some states. Bala Muhammad also approved the construction of the Hajj camp to serve as a transit camp for intending pilgrims in order to ease the difficulties faced by pilgrims before they are airlifted to the Holy Land. The camp was named after the Sultan of Sokoto, His Eminence Muhammad Sa'ar Abu Bakr CFR, and was commissioned by the Sultan himself in a colorful ceremony. From the various policies and programs unfolded by Governor Bala Muhammad since he came to office, there is no doubt that the man has a great vision for a great Bochi state. In his three years in office, he has introduced an array of developmental projects, all of which have been well received by the people. His administration has opened up opportunities for the people. Indeed, courtesy of his multifaceted agenda, a very positive impact has been made on the lives of the people of Bochi State in a very short time. Through his leadership by example, Governor Muhammad has been able to make fantastic progress in his futuristic journey of changing the Bochi State narrative of poor governance. So far, it has been an excellent beginning and another chance should be given to consolidate the gains that were made so far.